Greetings all and thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a popular 140-acre botanical expanse located within Papago Park off the Galvin Parkway out of Phoenix, Arizona that plays host to over 450,000 annual visitors and acts as one of only 24 such gardens accredited by the American Alliance of Museums. Purported to harbor chilling restless spirits tied to its past, are you prepared to brave the history and hauntings of the iconic Desert Botanical Garden. Historically, through the 1930s, a group of local interests would come together in an effort to ensure the preservation of a plot of native desert environment. And in April of 1934, the Arizona Cactus and Native Flora Society, or ACNFS, was established under the purpose of sponsoring a botanical garden to encourage the protection, appreciation, and understanding of the world's deserts, namely the Sonoran. Eventually, the society was joined by one Gertrude Webster who would offer her finances, political connections, and encouragement in the establishment of a botanical garden within Papago Park, and by one Margaret Bell Douglas who would offer similar support while donating around 1,500 specimens to the herbarium. And in 1938, following extensive work by the ACNFS, George Lindsay would be selected as the garden's first executive director, with the establishment officially opening its bounds to the public the following year in 19. 39 as a non-profit museum. In 1947, sadly, Gertrude Webster would pass away, willing her estate to be utilized in support of the garden she so loved. In 1961, a visitor center and gift shop were added to the site, and in 1970, a library was constructed to house the institution's collection of rare books and prints. Most recently, in 2002, a $17 million renovation and expansion project would be performed across Desert Botanical Grounds, which would welcome the addition of a new entryway, admissions area, gift shop, and more. The Desert Botanical Garden remains open into the present, offering over 50,000 species for viewing, including 485 rare or endangered ones, alongside a range of displays, events, classes, and more. While it's unknown who or what exactly these prestigious old gardens are haunted by, Desert Botanical has long been shrouded in stories of encounters with the paranormal, with both staff and visitors to its bounds reporting extreme cold spots and spontaneous gusts of chilled wind, ghostly music heard in the air, and the constant feelings of being watched or of being followed by someone or something unseen. Some tell the Desert House, which formerly housed multiple garden directors and now hosts office space, is haunted by the spirits of those tied to its bounds and lives since past. And within, many have told of the sounds of someone unseen shuffling about, of instances where objects are observed moving around inexplicably, and even of the sensation of being brushed or pushed up against by what feels like an invisible person. Over Desert Botanical's many trails, both employees and guests have reported phantom wafts of tobacco smoke that drift about, the mysterious scents of carnations and marigolds smelled when none are in bloom, and spook lights and phantom lantern glows spied flitting about the horizon after dark. Lastly, Webster Auditorium, which takes its name after Garden co-founder Gertrude Webster, is claimed to act as a sort of epicenter for supernatural phenomena on site, and those who have braved it, especially after dark, have told of chairs sighted scooting across entire rooms on their own, frequent electrical malfunctions and abnormal battery death rates, and of instances in which personal effects go missing only to turn up later in strange places. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone and everyone you know so our upcoming on-site series Sleepovers gets the welcome it deserves. Until next time.